Again, thank you so much for doing this. Um, I didn't know what to expect because uh, it's just like, you know, I was like I said with you before. I was going through my Marvel cards, and I was like, oh, Julie Bell, uh, she used to live in the area, I think. And like, I don't even know. Like, I was going through your uh, your bio, and like, I didn't see anything about Lehigh Valley. So, I don't know if you want to like touch a little bit on that. How uh, how y- your what part did you have in the Lehigh Valley? And uh... it was just kind of a, it was just by chance um, that Boris and I ended up here. Um, when we got together, we just chose a place to live that was sort of close to New York City because at the time, um, doing, you know, business with art required being in the city, you know, sometimes, and it would be definitely difficult to be real far away. But um, you know, it just looked like a good area to be. I had kids, uh, six and eight years old at the time. And, um, so it was a good, a good spot to settle. So we really love it here. I've, I've loved it all along. It's definitely changed a lot over the years, you know? Um, but I yeah. just, I really think it's perfect. I love you, it. You've been except all over the, the Except for the sneezing and stuff. Oh from yeah. The allergies. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you're, you're out more towards Harrisburg now. No, no, we're still, um, we're in the area of Lehigh Valley. Oh, yeah. oh okay. Oh, okay, cool. Um, yeah, you've been all over the place. Um, I don't know if you want to take us through um, your life a little bit. Like you, you, you went, you were, you started in Texas, right? That's where you were born yeah. and raised a little bit. And then you, yep. then you moved to Georgia and did I see Ohio and Michigan in there somewhere? Um, yeah, yeah. For, well, first was I was born in Texas, and then um, when I was about twelve years old, my parents got divorced, and I moved to Atlanta, Georgia area, not the city, but around. And during that time, we moved like five or six times. It was really an insane uh, lifestyle that I had there. <laughs> I guess my mom was kind of weird, but um, anyway. Then after that, I moved back to Texas for a while, and then moved up to Upper Michigan and lived on. Um, Lake Superior area um, in Marquette, Michigan, which was just a gorgeous. If you go there in the summer, it is paradise, mm, especially wow. the late summer. It's so beautiful there. Um, inspiration and, for uh, some paintings, maybe. What's that? Was that an inspiration for some paintings, maybe? Oh well, probably so. I don't really think about it directly, but I, when I was there, I mean, I'm a person who loves rocks, and I they have some gorgeous rocks there at Lake Superior. Anybody who's been there, they're famous for their rocks that they have because yeah. <laughs> they're just all different colors. It's crazy. And you can look down in the water and just see all these colors of the rocks. Uh, but anyway, all those rocks that I have, I look at them all the time and I'm positive that that is part of my uh, paint, painting when I just when I think about not even just painting rocks, but just the, the way colors. the colors work together yeah. and the patterns and everything. Now, did you find that like moving around a lot and not like really staying in one spot for too long kind of breed it, breeded a lot of creativity in your mind? Oh, I'm positive. I, I definitely think um, getting out into the world, uh, traveling at any capacity is just so good for your mind to make you feel comfortable with, you know, different ideas in the world. And um so I'm really grateful that I, I was, you know, a lot of it was difficult because being uprooted a lot doesn't necessarily feel good when it's happening, but um, it definitely added to, um, I think, creativity, but also just the sense of feeling, you know, pretty confident in yourself. Yeah. Um, just having that and, experience under your belt the, to, yeah, mm-hmm. to keep, I'm, I'm kind of the same way. I was in the military, so I moved around a lot. Um, and I, I really appreciated having that experience because, you know, you get to see different sides of people, places, um, you know, all that. Yeah. Uh, when, when did you start getting into art? I know your, your, your mom was an artist, right? Um, yeah. And my father was an architect. 
Okay. Um, and so, yeah, they. I, I think I was really just born with that in me. I don't think it's something, I mean, I think I've just always done it. And um, I remember even in like fifth grade, my teacher kind of pressing me to make a decision right now about my life, <laughs> my life goals. She was like, you gotta have a goal. I'm like, okay, I wanna be an artist, you know, cause that was a thing that I could think of at the time I was in fifth grade. Um, but, you know, anyway, um, yeah. So I think it's just something that was just who I am. And then uh, I didn't really take any actual art classes until I was in my senior year in high school uh, when I took art in school. And I really just loved it. I loved the attention I got from the teacher and she would give me like special assignments to do things for, you know, other projects outside of the class. Um, and it made me feel really like validated, you know, and like, oh, this is something I could really use. And so, um, you know, then I went to art. I didn't ever go to an actual art school, uh, but I did go to a bunch of different colleges because I was when I was married before that lifestyle also moved around a lot. And so uh, all the different schools that I went to, I always took art, you know, I always studied art and um, just had great teachers all along, but I never really took any painting classes when I was in school because people would tell me, don't take a painting class until you know which school you're gonna actually graduate from. I don't know why they why, gave me that advice, that? but they yeah, felt like that weird. was important. Yeah. yeah. So I, um, do you know anything about like why would a person say that? I don't even know. No idea. Yeah. Yeah, maybe their just their heads are so far up their own ass. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably, there's a lot of that going around, but yeah, anyway. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so whatever. It didn't ever. I didn't ever take it in school, and then when I. Um, I just took, I've really focused on drawing, life drawing and, you know, just tons of life drawing and color theory also was something that I did take classes in that I think I really learned a lot during that time that brought me, you know, into what I use. I use that a lot. I think about things that I learned. But when I met Boris and I watched him paint, it really was like, it seriously was like an instant transfer of information, you know, how he put the colors down and worked with it to make the painting it, 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 to, at first it was like kind of crazy because he was using all these colors that didn't make sense to paint a person's body. And I was like, Whoa, that's this crazy green he's using and this real blue, blue, you know, what's he doing? And when it was like, after he just put it all together in like 20 minutes, all of a sudden it was like, Whoa, it's in context and it looks amazing. And it's so much more alive than if he was thinking skin colors, you know? Mm -hmm. So it really just brought, um, it just really, it was so cool to see that. And so he's the one who taught me my basic oil painting technique, you know, that I learned from. And then I, um, over the years, you know, I've just incorporated a lot of my own stuff and just experimented and been inspired by other artists, you know. So over the years, that style has evolved quite a bit. Yeah. And would you say, would you um consider your husband like one of your teachers one of your best teachers maybe oh yeah that, that, that changed everything sure. about the way you paint and, and all that um yes. yeah that's really cool because you, you used to model for him right you started as a model for him and right you were a bodybuilder right. and um yes yeah that's so yeah one of the things um that kind of blows my mind all the things that you accomplished and still being a mother to two kids while doing all that like bodybuilding you know all your animal paintings photography doing the marvel and and, and i didn't know you were you did dc comics as well i didn't know that not very bit. much for dc okay. I, I wanted to do more for them but it just you know didn't happen that way at the time i mean i did a few things they were trading card um trading cards and i did a couple of like i don't know what it was like toy packages for some kind of batman toys <laughs> um, probably not many people have ever seen those. You might not even no. know it was mine if you ever did. I didn't. I, you, you did a, a Game Boy cover too. I just I saw. I mean, I didn't know you did that. I don't know if that came from somewhere yeah. else, but um, okay. Yeah, I don't know if they take thing. like your artwork <laughs> and then they put it somewhere without you. No, you have to know about well, it, I guess, right? Uh, I mean, that definitely happens, but I don't think yeah. Game Boy would have done that. But I, I, I think is that I <laughs> did all these things. I didn't. I'm not a video game player. And so I don't really know a lot about 
the different uh, you know gotcha. makers of the games unfortunately <laughs> but I did try playing Mario Brothers with my kids and I was so <laughs> not good at it so I just kept like diving over the mushroom and right into the abyss yeah. boom boom you know it just kept happening <laughs> um you know album covers meatloaf uh yeah, you did what uh, three or four bad, of them bad out of hell three yeah yeah um, yeah. That. Uh, by the way, how did you feel? Did you ever get to meet Meatloaf at all? Or I didn't actually get to meet him face to face. We talked on the phone, you know, quite a few times. And he once was given a show here, and he invited us to the show. We went to oh, see cool. it, but we didn't go and meet him or anything like uh, that. Okay. Um, you have multiple awards. Um, the the Chesley Awards. Uh, you won. Th- three of those i believe and nominated for seven is that correct oh cool oh you okay. don't even you don't even know okay <laughs> i just you know uh, i know I'm more thinking, than you do I'm about just, yourself i think okay. it's really really cool and i love it when i see that <laughs> happening it's not something that i <laughs> you know i just i'm not a number person <laughs> okay gotcha um yeah. advertising uh illustrations for nike coca-cola ford uh cover of of heavy metal magazine mike do you remember heavy metal oh, yeah. magazine oh yeah um uh and and just keeps going on and on and on so like yeah how did you find the time to then you have to deal with children on top of that that's that would be the hard thing i would say no that was the funnest part was it okay i just yeah that seriously was my number one priority was uh being a mom all the way through yeah yeah and i mean i'm an artist and yeah you know it's it was it was just something that i there's no way i would have ever put any other part of my life ahead of my kids Mm -hmm. just wouldn't happen yeah and fortunately i was able to work at home so that i could be there and you know also they uh, were really really good kids they um, are artists themselves and they always they were born to be artists as well i can see that in them um just really wonderful people and it made it just a great environment to be painting and they enjoyed what i was doing you know and they liked the characters and the games and they play video games and all that stuff, you know, mm. so they really thought that was very cool. Um, but it was fun to make them part of it as much as possible too. like take them to the comic cons and, oh, yeah, you cool. know, take them to visit the yep. people at the Marvel office. That was really fun. Um, do they we, collect, you know, so. do they collect Julie Bell, uh, cards like are the yeah so you were were, you were the one who told me that you when you were in school that somebody was yeah that was probably one of my sons and he was he was giving he was bringing he would bring them to me and say his friends at school wanted to have autographs you know i I gotta tell you it made me really nervous because i was just like do i want to give this to someone i hardly know (laughs) and because and i was like i was like am i gonna get that card back i don't know uh, but yeah, and I came back. And I was like, "Wow, you did it!" Now, then I was like, "Is this real?" <laughs> yeah, but yeah, that was probably real. I mean, yeah. I don't know why anybody else would be doing it other than I don't. Yeah, yeah that's a good. Him. That's a good question. I don't know. <laughs> but he definitely was doing that with some some of the kids at yeah. school. So, so you got a lot of that them. coming in probably back in like the early '90s. You were just like, "All right, here's another one." Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> Going back to uh, school a little bit, like when I was little. Um, you know, I've loved X-Men comics, you know, the car, the TV show, all that. So I was drawing a lot and, um, you know, my parents made sure that I was signed up for art class every year. My sister is a amazing painter. She went to, uh, Savannah college of art and design. She's, oh wow. yeah, she's ve- very, very good. Great school. My, my brother yeah. is good as well, but he went a different way, but I never felt like when I was in art class, I always felt the least creative when i was in class like i felt it was Hmm. too not structured but too repetitive like it's hard Hmm. being creative in the same spot for me you know i always felt more creative outside of class and i learned more sort of outside of class of um you know different techniques and things like that and and my sister's showing me different ways but um it was really like I always liked the comic book style, but I remember seeing your cards and I was like, wow, that's what they would actually look like in real life. <laughs> yeah. And cool. I have absolutely like, no matter how bad I want to be Wolverine or Magneto, I will never have that kind of body. So <laughs> I don't have to worry about that. 
I don't have to. You can <laughs> Take be it like, off the list. Yeah, you can be like Noodle Man or something. It's just never going to happen. <laughs> Spaghetti Noodle Man or something tr- like that. I can try to be RoboCop, just, just get <laughs> shot up and just replaced with robot parts. I can probably do that. But, but, but well, you, wait. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. But you're, you were such a, um, you know, until, until Jay brought up, he's like, hey, I want to have Julie Bell on the show. It's like, you know, re- like looking at your work and all that, and it's really going back to like you're really one of the architects of my creative imagination and how I would draw and how I would try to improve, you know, sketching and and um, you know, really trying to get correct proportions to figures well, and, and things like that. And you're like really a, a huge part of that. So so that's an amazing thing thank to you hear. Very much for I- that. Uh, that really that really touches my heart and it makes me really really happy that um you know i could influence you that way yeah and i'm glad you know i i understand what you're saying about you know when you're in class it's different than when you're outside of class and i think that that's just kind of normal um for most for a lot of people not everybody some people respond better in class for different reasons but um when you're in class you know you're you're learning more of the discipline side of it and the structure stuff and uh techniques and things like that maybe and then when you're outside and your mind is freer even at, literally outside with the sky and above you instead of in a room your brain just gets bigger in a different way yeah um and then you know you're learning techniques like you said from your sister and whatever but i think when you're in the class you're um also you're you're in front of other peers of yours and you know the teacher and everything so your brain kind of freezes up a little bit in terms of feeling just comfortable to just let it out and mm-hmm. do your thing uh maybe i mean I, I think a lot of people feel that way and so when they're in class they're a little more inhibited to be as creative even though they don't necessarily even realize they're being inhibited that way yeah i mean um, i i was never nervous about expressing myself in front of people like i'm, I'm a was still i'm kind of a musician so I, i'm was never nervous performing in front of anybody or presenting something creative in front of people. Um, I just kind of got the vibe that like, well, all the other kids in art class, some of them are are like true wannabe artists and and things like that. But it, but if I, I just don't think they would get it, you know, I think it might go over. Could it it also be like the structure? Like there's, like art i don't think is art supposed to be structured like here, here's someone to a degree yeah but you, not... you gotta learn from somebody maybe yeah. but like shouldn't it be more th- free thinking um and yeah. i feel well, like school would about, just be too structured think about writing you have to learn how to write letters in yeah. school mm-hmm. and construct sentences that other people are going to be able to relate to in some way you know and then once you learn those basic structures you can write something whatever it is it could be as creative as you want and it can be you know you know what i'm saying so you that structure just makes it where you can communicate with others yeah i think Apply, so i think if people saying. are all about structure that's just one you know some people are like really all about structure and technique and they they are um i'm not saying this is i don't i'm definitely like everybody's doing their thing and with art and so some people are much more heavily focused on the structure and the technique and some people want to completely get away from that but i think you know having that at least in your background even if you toss it aside later on or whatever um it's going to make it where you can communicate what you want to say yeah and and art is is in any form is completely subjective like you you can have you know 10 people looking at a painting one of them's gonna be like well technically this isn't how that lighting would look and like is that really the point like that doesn't matter that this is an expression and do you yeah. understand this person's expression that's the main point I, I do agree with you and i definitely like like when i would do the things with uh painting metal mm-hmm. um you know i've painted a lot of things with the chrome stuff and yeah. it, i remember when i was figuring all that out and experimenting with that that i realized like if i make this the way it would be in real life it's not going to read nobody you won't be able to see it's going to kind of be absorbed into the environment i'm going to have to change it from what reality would be and i don't care you know that's just what i'm doing but at the same time um if it was something that was glaringly if it was distracting because it was done in a way that was wrong by 
you know, what would be reality. Um, that's a distraction and it, t- and it yoinks you out of the picture. You know, you want to be able to be in the picture completely for my artwork. This is the way I feel. I want to, I don't want people to remember that they're looking at, you know, something that a person did. I want them to be in it. Yeah. It's just like if you're watching a movie and the actors suddenly stop they start acting in a different way that makes you aware that they're acting. It feels like, oh, you know, mm-hmm. and I think that's what happens sometimes if you have technical errors that, you know, are distracting. It's one thing if you have a technical error that works with your picture and, it, and it's just, you know, it's not reality or whatever it is your expression or maybe the whole thing just comes apart and it's all in, you know, really big brush strokes and, and all that. But somehow it's still in its own context of that piece of art. It still holds together. And it makes you feel like it's all that reality and you're in that world. Yeah. Just like a movie. Yeah. It's like that MC Escher picture where he's holding the uh the chrome orb in his hand. It's like, how how does that translate from his brain and how does he get it so so flawless? And it's like how, yeah. it's, insane. it's insane. So he really understood not only surface textures and you know and all that, but he he understood how to you know put that into his pencil and make it um so that you'd read it too so you'd be able to just correct connect directly to his mind Mm -hmm. and not be stopped in the middle by something that was a little bit not done as you know i mean that's his style to make it so stippling through just just Mm -hmm. tiny little micro dots i I did a couple um stippling um pictures and things and actually one of the only things I produced in an art class that I really, really loved. I think it was in 11th grade. It was this giant bird man with these really detailed wings and feathers in the background is this city being destroyed. And mm. our um, 11th grade art class at the end of the year, mine and like five other kids, entire portfolios were stolen. Oh I... yeah, <laughs> the janitor. Like... I don't know, but like all of our projects for the year, all gone. And the teacher was that like, sucks. "All this artwork is mine now." Well, I know what you guys were working on, and it was pretty good. Didn't get to see the final product, but I guess you all pass. So, <laughs> but that, it's, yeah, that, that, that's, that's terrible. Just, that just, yeah, that that stuck with me. Just why, why? <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, well, you know. Life is, I mean, seriously, sometimes stuff happens to your things, but you have to, what you should do is right now, start working on a new one, Mm -hmm. a new version of that, recreate it, and I bet you, you'll be interested to see how you do it different this time. At your request, I absolutely will do that. Yeah, I want (laughs) to see (laughs) that. I got to go to Dick Blick now. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Concerning uh, going back to your like your kind of style of painting, it to me it almost looks like uh, like some of it looks like biblical in a way. Like you have you know this this flying horse and this like uh, like either like a sexy warrior or um, just a, a almost like perfect perfect human being like on it or near it or something like that. Um, I, I assume this comes from like your your bodybuilding days that just the you know that fit sexiness um, when uh, when you collaborate with you do a lot of collaborations with Boris right um, when you do that so, yeah when you do that uh, how much of that is you and how much of that is him like who who really comes up with the ideas at both of you and um, who has like the final say because there might be some, I would imagine, some back and forth. Now we should do this. Now we should do this. Yeah, we don't. I mean, honestly, all the times we've ever collaborated, I can't really think of any time that we had a big struggle over what to do. I think we both pretty much have the same, you know, goal in mind of finishing the jobs. Or if it's a commission, it depends on what kind of commission it is, you know, what kind of client, if it's a more corporate thing or a private commission for some person. Um, uh, as far as how much each one does, it really is dependent on, you know, what's happening at any given moment, because we can both do all the parts and it's not like we have some specific formula for how we 
um, work together. You know, it's not like he does step A and I do step B and then, you know, that kind of thing. It's not like that. It's just that we, we're all, we're, we're both working on multiple pieces of art. I work on many more pieces of art at a time than he does. He likes to focus on a a small handful or maybe even just one sometimes, but I like to have a lot of paintings going at the same time because I feel like I can just get more done that way. And I, I kind of enjoy jumping from one to another, um, you know, as one's drying, I can work on a different one. So, but when I'm, you know, when we're working together, it's like, if he really wants to focus on this one area, it's like, it's just whoever wants to do whatever and whatever time each person has. It's so driven by that. You know, everybody asks this question because they're all curious and it makes sense that you'd want to know, but there's just not really any specific answer on, you know, it's kind of a controlled chaos. Yeah. I like, that. I like that. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, but we're comfortable with that. And, okay. and it works, you know, very well. And, you know, we both can, like, if I feel like, oh, I really like the way this is. And he says, you know, I just have one more thing to say about it, then go for it, you know. But I don't remember any time that there's ever been a real struggle over over that. Now, did, you said you did, um, like, with corporate things and commissions. Um, have you ever had um you know uh, a piece of work that you've done where there was a time constraint and because of that you maybe weren't completely happy with the end result uh i feel like we really don't turn in work that's not to our own satisfaction i mean there are definitely pieces i like better than others Mm -hmm. um you know for sure there's some that now I look back on him and I'm like, oh, I really would love to do that over again and could've, could've would, it, would not have done it like that at all. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, especially with the with the advertising work that's for an, for an ad agency, they really do seem to kind of always be up against, you know, a very that short deadline. But, but that's one where, way that it works really well that we work together. So anyway, we just tell the people how much time we need and if they can't, deal with it then you know if they have to have it before that then we just have to not we have to say no we we aren't gonna promise you know i can have this for you in two weeks if we if it's just not a possible thing yeah yeah right like what like what kind of we don't want to turn in yeah go ahead i I would i would imagine like for the aqua teen hunger force poster movie poster there would have been a deadline for that right like how hard was getting? Uh, you know that was a while ago i don't really remember but um things like that i mean most of the time most of the time it works out that they adjust their deadlines to what we need. Yeah. yeah okay. You know, we do put them, if, you know, if it's something that's a big job like that, we will put it um, as a priority, you know, uh, mm. especially the ones with the deadline. Cause a lot of the private commissions don't have a publishing deadline. Obviously it's for someone to hang mm. on their living room wall or whatever. So, um, but the, the ones that have the really hard deadlines, we can put those up in front and just get it done. Um, but, you know, uh, I mean, we hardly ever have to say we need more time. We usually just say, I mean, we hardly ever have to say, agree on a time and then later come down and say we need more time than we thought we would. It's usually, we pretty much know how much time we're going to need mm-hmm. for whatever mm-hmm. comes up, unless some weird life thing comes up that makes yeah. it where Right, you yeah, you guys have been doing it long enough, you know how long it takes to do yeah. this or that or that. Or exactly, that, right. Yeah, right. The face you painted on uh, Master Shake the big milkshake oh. guy is, is one of the <laughs> most unsettling, like, like just scary looking faces. And, and I was, I was really the past couple of days really studying faces on a lot of your work. And there's two of them that, that you did with uh Wolverine from X-Men that his facial expression, mm-hmm. I, I would never want to see someone looking at me like that in real life. Cause I know <laughs> I'm in, I'm, big trouble like i'm about to get killed there's a wolverine <laughs> card of uh, one of your drawings but obviously it's like a rare like special card um but it's going on ebay for fifty thousand dollars what one, one card i mean i don't i don't Wait, know if one card one, one card i don't know if that's really what it's worth or if it's just some jackass like yeah let's see what i can get for this yeah. but yeah he's got it up there for fifty thousand dollars yeah, <laughs> I have to look at that. That's interesting. Yeah. Well, that's a card. It's not even the original. It's, it's a it's a card. Yeah, I mean, but it's like obviously really rare in some. I don't know what what's rare about it, but um, it's it's your yeah. it's your drawing. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Well, yeah, I guess um, in a way the cards can be even more valuable sometimes than the original. Maybe I don't know um, because of the fact of the way the creator market or the right. collector market is. Yeah. So yeah. Yep. 
you know, I was watching the mm-hmm. episode of uh, Pawn Stars where a guy came in with a case of Pokemon cards that were like worth two hundred and fifty grand a piece. Yeah. Like, yeah. how is that? Yeah, like you, there's such a small niche market for that that there's only like four or five people on the planet that will pay that, right? Who, and whoever yeah. means to, it's it's just insane. Well, I think insane. I think comic comic books and and in general and cards and stuff are I think they're making a comeback, like because of they were so flooded in the early '90s that they're not worth anything. If you have something that's from the early '90s, it's not everyone has that, you know. But I think yeah. they're starting to come. They're starting to gain in value now, and they're starting to make a little bit of a comeback. I'm seeing comic book stores pop up all over the place now. Do you think you would ever? Yeah. Do you think you would ever get back into that scene? Well, I mean, I don't know. I if they would come and uh, ask me about it, I could talk about it and see. You know, I I just would have to decide. I it would depend on what the, anybody would have to say about it. You know, the kind of deal yeah. they would want or whatever. Um, one of my son's David Palumbo did the set for 2020, and it is amazing to me. First of all, I don't know if you've seen it. His his set. I, I um, have. I haven't. Yeah. Yeah, but they're gorgeous cards, and um, it was just so exciting for him. You know, like I said, he grew up around all this stuff, and it was so exciting for him to yeah. be uh, asked to do that. You oh. know, and he did the entire set by himself. Um, oh, wow. But it's also interesting to see, like, how, the, you know, I didn't even realize this. He was telling me how they're being sold, and it's not anything like they were being sold back when, in the 90s, when I was doing that. And, you know, back then, kids like yourselves could have bought the cards, and I think now yeah. they're, they're selling them in a whole different way that makes yeah, them yeah, it's like some, expensive for it, kids. It's like some guy on eBay, like, okay, who's paying for this? And, like, you pay for the pack, and then he opens them up, and, he, and he's like, if you get a good one, you get that, or... I don't know. It's it's weird. Yeah, they're doing it in a weird way. Yeah. But so he does. Yeah. What is he? Is it like like what's the the brand? Is it Flair or uh, I don't even know what the brands oh. are these days. Uh, I forgot. He was he talks about it sometimes. I I don't remember. I'm sorry, but that's right. Um, yeah. If you look up his stuff, um, yeah. David Palumbo is his name. Mm-hmm. So. Okay, he's the one that was um, bringing the signature. Oh, concerts. okay, so. Maybe you knew him. We've met before, you maybe. <laughs> you were in school with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You I were on the bus I, with him. That's right, yeah. <laughs> I went into a, a comic book shop, and there was um, an issue of uh, X-Men from probably the late 70s or early 80s, maybe mid-80s. And I remembered the cover very clearly. For it was, And they were selling it for 500 bucks. I'm like, last time I saw it, it, that specific issue, it was ripped up and covered in dirt in my cousin's driveway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we didn't know what they had. Seven or eight years old. Like, yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> so, um, talking about style, what what style do you prefer? Like fantasy, portrait, abstract. You do you do all those. So, is there like yeah, one, one I kind of just don't. I I really um, like I mentioned before, not being a numbers person. I'm also yeah. like to pick favorites is really difficult for me because I just love so many different. I mean, visual stuff. Just yeah, ugh, I live. It's like ugh. even even you know, when it comes I mean, to people and animals. Is there like do you yeah. prefer animals or do you, you don't prefer any of it? It's just whatever. I don't prefer. Yeah. I really don't. I mean, it's. I just you know see some subject that I want to paint and I, or I just think of it in my mind or whatever. Um, something comes up that I decide I want to paint that and. Um, I mean, if I don't feel that real love for what it is, if it's. If I'm painting from life, that's a whole different deal because if you have a model that just comes in, you might not realize how into you know the way everything looks at the beginning. You might be like, oh, this is just kind of regular, whatever, and then you start doing it, and you're like, oh my god, I just love the way the light's hitting here, and I love this, you know, the way this person's face is shaped or whatever, and you just start to, you know, if you don't feel that way for what you're painting, it's not going to have the same charge to it, I believe. Um, but yeah, and I, you know, I mean, I just, I, I get away from painting animals sometimes. Like I haven't really done any things that are just specifically animals for a while. And I just started working on a new one yesterday of a horse. And just once again, it's like, you know, reignited this love for this. Yeah. You subject. do a lot of horses. Do you, you yeah. did you live on a farm at any point in time? Or because I see like that I, kind of aspect of some of your paintings. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I grew up in Texas. There were horses around yeah. and. 
you know, I always loved the way they look and I love horses and dogs are my thing, um, mostly. And I mean, I love all animals, honestly. Yeah. I just, anything. I have, I have three I, dogs. I, uh, <laughs> what's that? Do you have, how many dogs do you have? Two. Oh, okay. Two dogs. I, have, I have three dogs. Yeah. And what kind of all, dogs do you have? Uh, I've got a Great Dane and then I have a, uh, so he's like 150 pounds and then I have like a medium sized dog. Uh, she is a rescue. I'm not really sure what she is, but her tail comes up like a border collie. So something yeah. like that. Um, and then I had just got like a little, uh, French bulldog pug mix. So I have like this big giant medium and then small. <laughs> That's so great. <laughs> what yeah. kind of dogs do you ours, have? Ours are, what's that? What, uh, what kind of dogs do you have? They're, um, two rescue dogs. They're both from different situations but um they're both the same mix of border collie and eskimo and okay. they're so cute yeah oh, wow yeah so they're like 30 pounds you know yeah i have four cats and i assume He's they're cat all lady. chinese <laughs> <laughs> mike is definitely we have a, a grand cat we have many grand cats yeah. because david our son david has uh four cats and then our other son tony has one cat i've always wanted to get like a an actual like commission portrait done of, of all my boys and me and my wife together in like some smoking a pipe in, in, in front of a giant <laughs> fireplace with me sitting on a giant velvet chair and, uh, <laughs> standing next to me in like a like a beautiful gown with the with the boys just sitting around but um like you, you see, good. The, there's like online companies like send us a picture of your pet and we'll digitally alter it and send it back with wearing a top hat, riding a penny farthing. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, that's, that's that's funny. But I actually want to get it like a real, really yeah. nice painting commission to do that. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if I can get my you know, this for that long. This, I mean, the way you're describing that, I'm not you know saying you should have me do it or anything. But I just this is what I love about painting animals is that I want to bring full respect to even if I'm painting it in a funnier way, like you're saying, like I, mm -hmm. you know, do something different with it. Cause I have done a few paintings with dogs in fantasy type situation. Um, but I want it to be full respect as if some, you know, great painter yeah. put his attention to it or her attention to it and yeah. make it, you know, just the full respect of a portrait. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Plus I don't think I can afford you. <laughs> <laughs> hey you know what uh we will definitely be models for you though yeah we'll, we'll do it we can do yeah. 2d's uh uh poster or, or whatever painting and uh yeah we can we could definitely model and then uh sure oh. sure we can see where we're see i'll where keep you on my list <laughs> <laughs> um there there seems to be um two different sides to your paintings like a, a light side and then like i said before like almost biblical and then like there's this dark side sometimes that i see uh is that like just like a day-to-day -day thing or is that like planned out or um like where, do, where i think does... it's just yeah I, I basically use my art as my own art therapy <laughs> yeah and um you know i do uh you know i've had a lot of you know experiences in my life that got me in touch with a darker side of of life and um, you know, I kind of, you know, you learn through those things and everything, you process them in different ways. And, um, I think it's neat that you're seeing that coming out sometimes. Yeah. Um, and the lighter side is something that I just feel like I really, really hold on to. I, I mean, my life is so wonderful the way it is with, you know, Boris and my boys and my family and, and my artwork and everything is just, it's like, um, so it's like, I want to bring feelings of uh, hope and pep and happiness to other people, you know, and I do sometimes get letters from people saying that, you know, they had this picture in the hospital when they were sick or something. And it makes me really happy that, that I could give that to somebody, um, you know, to have them have that feeling. Yeah. It's like, a, like you have a couple that are like on with like the, the flying horse and then um, like someone just like reaching out to something and there's like maybe a dragon or something you know um yeah um and then you have uh uh maybe maybe it was done a, a while ago some of your comic um cards were a little dark so was that like the, the your dark side more in the past and now yes. you're doing more animals and, and um 
Uh, I mean, you know, I, I really just feel like it's part of the texture of my life, you know, to yeah. have that as a mix and part of the mix. And, um, you know, there's just been a lot of difficult things and sadness and uh, fears and things, you know, that, you know, you're left with that make you um, need to process those things in different ways. So, yeah. Speaking of the dark side, I have a, I have a, mm -hmm. a quick question for you. Uh, you're painting the gift with the uh, with the centaur man and uh, yeah. the one below him. Now, I was looking at this last night, and I'm hoping this was intentional because I caught it. If it was, is that Mark Hamill from Star no. Wars? That Luke Skywalker? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's actually one of my sons, Tony. Oh, okay. It's Okay. <laughs> he looks like Luke Skywalker. Yeah, if next time you look That's at that, funny. Take, take a look at You'll Mark love to hear that. from 1983, <laughs> I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. <laughs> <laughs> Julie, do you know you have stamps out? <laughs> yeah, like in Turkmenistan yeah, and all that. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> where, where can we get those at? Oh, I guess online. you got to go to Turkmenistan. <laughs> oh, jeez. All right. I don't know. <laughs> they didn't ask me for that. They just those are some that just happened by them by <laughs> they they springed up. <laughs> <laughs> what uh what kind of music um do you listen like do you, you listen to music while while you're while you're painting? Yes, definitely. Uh Boris really kind of needs to have music on pretty much all the time Same. and he always listened to classical music before he knew me and like 100% of the time, always classical. Mm -hmm. And he never really, honestly, he didn't even know who David Bowie was when I first met him. So that <laughs> oh, was <man>. interesting. <laughs> so it was just so, so much fun to bring these things. And like, so what we do now is we alternate music days. I mean, we've been together for 33 years now. So it's a long time. And we alternate music days where his day is classical day and my day is whatever I want. And so I, you know, he's learned all these musical artists that he never knew about before. Um, and I've learned so much about classical music as well. You know, I can recognize the voices of composers I never even heard of before I knew him. Hmm. So it's just, it's really um, great to have both sides, you know, and, and I mean, I really love all kinds of music. Um, yeah, so, I, I remember you know, in like... I came, it had to have been like sixth or seventh grade. Um, I brought in uh, Stone Temple Pilots into art class because they they would people would bring CDs in and then they'd play your music. Yeah. And just remember, like the teacher's response to it was like, "Wow, that was really good." And I was like so proud of myself <laughs> for like bringing in Stone Temple Pilots. You know, before <laughs> before they broke up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's very cool. Well, may, maybe that maybe that's why I didn't dig. Uh, maybe that's why I didn't feel creative. It, like we never had music and i don't think we had any music in any of my art classes in school it, it definitely helps i think for kind of, sure well, it, it does it really does yeah i remember when i when i would draw and and try to paint i would mostly just draw um i would always have to have music playing and i, I would make like either mixtapes or burn mix cds because you know back then you didn't have like youtube playlists or anything like that and i always had to have like you know, uh, I never listened to just one kind of music. It has to be 30 different kinds of music for me to be creative and, and just get different feelings while I'm while I'm painting. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's, it's important to, to switch it up. You'll be halfway done with something while you were listening to X, Y or Z band. And then you finish the other half while you were listening to something completely different. And you probably wouldn't have done it that way if you hadn't been listening to that that song absolutely or, or, yeah yeah that style of music I, I think the music makes you brave sometimes too like if you sometimes you know i'm going to start a painting it's a brand new thing and i'm, I'm actually terrified you know because i'm like oh god i gotta start because when you're at the beginning you just see this mountain of problems to solve ahead of you and mm -hmm. um so if you just put on this music and you're like yeah, yeah and it kind of gives you that energy and then you just blast into it and then once you're in it's no big deal. You just mm -hmm. keep doing just it. Just flow you know, then, you yeah. Make a mess, you fix it or whatever. But, um, but it does. It gives me courage when I have the music. <clears throat> Absolutely. Um, your your self portraits. Um, how how difficult is it to like? What do you use? Like a mirror? Do you look in a mirror or do you use a picture of yourself? Uh, yeah, most of the time they've been um, the things that I've done with myself. I've been from photos, but uh, I did one 
let's see, not this past summer, but the summer before um, from the mirror. And that was really fun. And then I, I did finish it up with a photo that I, it was difficult though, because like, you know, you're looking in a mirror and you try to take a picture of yourself and your camera's in the middle of it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was yeah. kind of hard. Yeah. <laughs> so I couldn't really do that, but, um, but I, I did the best I could. But the thing that was the biggest challenge for me with it when I did it that way is that it kept looking just like my sister, which nothing wrong with my sister, but I wanted it to be a portrait of me, yeah. but it kept turning into her. And oh, it was, wow. I mean, we look a lot alike, but it was just kind of funny how. Do you kind of get into like happened. your own head? Like when you're just sitting there staring at, at yourself, does it, do you just think about the strokes or are you thinking about like other things? I mean, that's, I don't know. I look at, if you're staring at yourself in a mirror for a little while, like I don't like, I don't like looking in a mirror to begin with at all, you know, cause it's just like judging yourself. But, um, did, did that, any of that happen like while you were doing that? Um, well, I know what you're talking about, but that's a really different thing when you are looking at yourself, either judging yourself or trying to, you know, I don't know what, there's different ways you can look at yourself mm -hmm. in the mirror. Um, but when I was painting myself, I was doing it the same that I would do if I was painting anybody else. So I was just mm. looking at shapes and light and shadow and color. But I did do one cool thing in a mirror one time that um, I, it was when I started to first feel like I'm 63 years old now. And when I first started to feel like, you know, my age was like my hair was starting to get gray or whatever. And, um, and, you know, you start to feel like, should I be coloring my hair? Should I whatever? And so anyway, I was looking in the mirror and thinking about this. And I was like, you know, if I was a wolf, I would be so proud of my gray hair and I wouldn't even care. And I'm like, this hell with this. I'm never coloring my hair again. You know, I'm just going to be like a wolf hair. So I love that. Nice. <laughs> Julia the wolf hair. <laughs> uh, yep. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Shades of Vampire. Um, is that a young Julie and a young Boris? That painting? Um trying to think of which one that it's, was. He's like standing, you're standing together and then behind him is on the wall is like painted in like, I guess, black. Oh, no, no, no. Okay. No, that's not. Because I was like flipping Once back again, and forth between you, you, that painting and you guys' like younger pictures. I was like, this kind of looks Yeah, like that's funny. No, yeah. the girl was a just a model that we worked with and uh, the guy was once again my son, Tony. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah, I think so. Young Mark Hamill. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look. I have to look that up again, but I'm pretty sure that was him, yeah. It did look like Now that I think about it, you're right, dude. Yeah. Going back to uh, <laughs> bodybuilding real quick, uh, my my um, my uncle Michael and my aunt Linda were both bodybuilders uh, back in the 80s and 90s, and one of my very first memories, like where I came out of the ether when I was probably like th probably three years old, was at one of their bodybuilding competitions, and I remember yeah, like, that's what is this? like what is going on like there's just an audience of people and there's just these huge muscular people up on stage I'm like am i supposed to be doing so i don't what is, i don't know am i alive like what is this it was just so strange that's so funny yeah <laughs> i can't imagine for a little kid like that I, my kids did go to my very first bodybuilding contest when they were pretty little i don't yeah. know how old they were but i remember hearing them in the audience yeah i'm like does everybody do this like, am I supposed to do this later? <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, I would have, you know, I would have, uh, like, a mat, I would have pictured, like, someone that went from bodybuilding to, if you're going to, if you want to get into, like, art to be, like, a sculptor or something like that. Mm. I mean, did you, I mean, did you, did you do any sculpting or you had, like, you did some artwork for, like, a New York company that did, that sculpted it or something like that? Or yeah, I, well, no, I, that yeah, I have done sculpting just for fun, and yeah. I really did enjoy it, and I felt like it, it would be something that I could develop, but uh, I didn't. Um, but uh, the sculptures that you've seen of mine that were done from the Franklin Mint mm. um, were done where I would do the designs, and I would make drawings, and then they would have sculptures. First, they would make a, just a real rough, what's called a maquette, which is just like the very rough start of it just to get the forms and you know the basic kind of core and energy of that of that sculpture without putting any real details in it at that point and then um they would it used to be that the franklin mint i don't know you're from lehigh valley so you know how far away is media pennsylvania yeah. and franklin mint is yep. in media so it's like just like an hour away yep. so it was really fun we could go there at that time they don't i don't think they're even doing that kind of stuff at all anymore but at the time they had everything in-house all the sculptors 
it was just so great. But anyway, um, we could go there and see this and make comments and make a new drawing or whatever if it needed something changed or just give feedback and then the sculptors. So it was kind of like working with that sculptor um, and it was just a great process. I, I was really proud of how those came out. I thought they were really nice work. a nice thing. Where are they located? Mm -hmm. um, well, know, what? Where? Do you know where the sculpt the the sculptures are located? Um, what? I don't know what you mean. Like they don't sell them anymore. Oh, okay. I don't think. No, yeah, I mean, it was I, from the Franklin Mint so a long time ago. Ha okay, so somebody has them in their house probably at this point yes okay. they probably like i'm sure that collectors have them yeah. and uh oh, wow. you see them for from time to time maybe I've on ebay done, or something uh, two sculptures my entire life one was uh, uh uh the the shao khan's mask from the bad guy from mortal Kombat. so it's like it's half skull face with all these horns on it and one oh, cool. and one very fat deer and they're both at my mom's house. <laughs> She's Very fat. Is your mom a collector? Yeah, she cl she collects all my stuff. Yeah, same here. My mom still has my artwork like up on the walls. I'm like, dude, yeah, it's like this crappy. Like I drew, I it was like a clay, uh, you know, it, clay like the st stuff you get like put in the calendar yeah, yeah, yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, of a window and somebody and a, like a kid looking out of the window. Hmm. Oh, that's on, cool. Onto like the street, yeah. Um, I, it's still up on the wall. It, it's just, it's horrible. <laughs> it's like, I mean, great, great idea, <laughs> cool not concept. a good artist. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I get it. <laughs> she was so proud. Like one time I, I, uh, we shot, we went to Shawnee up in the Poconos and, uh, we used to stay there a lot and they had a, they, an art, uh, competition going on and I was the only <laughs> one to enter and I won first place. <laughs> yeah. Yay, you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So those are my art uh, accomplishments. Um, well, <laughs> do you have, they were, the others were just too scared to compete against you. I guess, so, yeah. you know. <laughs> do you have um, any like paintings or works of art that, you know, that aren't yours that, that you can just sit still like no, no matter how many times you've seen it, you can just sit and stare at and, and just like, just absolutely be enthralled in it. And, and just, Oh yes, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. What's that? I mean, I, there's so much guys. art that I just am in love with, right? For sure. I mean, I, I, you know what I really love when I see a piece of art that is by another artist in any time in history, um, even, you know, ancient, ancient, like way back to like prehistoric kind of, or I don't, I don't know how old it is, but anyway, the things that you see like in um, natural history museums that mm -hmm. were made by really early people. You yeah. Know? Like Leonardo. Um, those no, of, way beyond that. Oh, way beyond I'm talking that. about like, okay. cave, like cave people cave, or something cavemen. or whatever. Oh, Whoever oh, it is okay. that made like little potteries and things. Yeah, but yeah. also into the, like Leonardo da Vinci and, you know, and all the other, like all through history. I love to yeah. see this art and I like to stand right in front of it if I can, because sometimes you can't have that close of access with Leonardo da Vinci. But yeah, yeah. Um, let's say you can be just like, you know, a couple of feet in front, just like if it was on my own easel. And I like to pretend that it is on my own easel. And then get my mind really into thinking that it's my painting and as if I was holding a brush and I was going to paint on it. And when you do that, it's weird because it just like goes into this other reality where that it just makes you see all the things, how different what they did from what you would do. And it makes you and it's like you get to read it from like the other side. So yeah, that's cool. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And I then the that. alarms are going off. They're like, Julie's running out yeah. with that artwork. <laughs> he thinks it's hers. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what's cool? I have um, some friends that own, do you know the artist Bugaro? Uh, I'm not, not familiar. No. Well, you should look it up. It's very yep. beautifully painted stuff. Um, really, really gorgeous. But I have some friends that own some of their, some of his art and some other things that are really beautiful from that time period. Um, and since they're my friends, I can go and look in their house and see it right in front of me and just like really... Nice. Just stand there yep. forever looking at it. Yeah, no what, guards. Or well, one of my goals is, <laughs> is to sit in front of uh, Picasso's uh, Guernica, the full size. It takes up the yeah. entire. Is that in the wall. Philadelphia? I've seen that. Philadelphia oh. Art and Museum. Once they had that in Minneapolis, and I got to see it there. Picasso yeah. had a whole section in the Philadelphia Wait, Art Museum. Wait, did it? Was it there? At yeah. some point. I don't know where it is now, but I would I would just right. love to sit in front of it. Like that's one of my, that that's one of my favorite paintings of all time where I, I could just sit and look at it for hours and if i had the full sized foot because it's like it is yeah. massive it's humongous 
just sit and stare at it for like three hours uh, that that would make that would make my entire day yeah um julie you, yeah. you've done covers for or you've actually done you've come you've created some books along with your husband um yes. like erotic fantasy art i'm kind of what's what's that all about i'm kind of curious is that just like um you know what's naked wait people? there's no book that's called that there's not what do you, oh you mean erotic fantasy oh it's something about how to or something oh there's i haven't a, seen the one called erotic fantasy art. That's, <laughs> that's what i that's uh, that's when i looked it up that's what it uh yeah I, but it was like Maybe sold it was out or something not or not available or something <laughs> The unauthorized. It might be described that way. Bell. Maybe. Yeah. It... <laughs> and, you know, it might be talking about this book that Boris did. Um, it was actually, it, he did that before I knew him. But he did this set of, um, I think it was like 30 paintings and 10 drawings or something. But it's just gorgeous paintings, um, fantasy paintings that are on the erotic side, you know. Okay, um, yeah. That's probably but, that one then. Was, uh, that might be what you're thinking yeah. of. It's a book called Mirage. It's but, just beautiful. Okay, so maybe it's titled something else, and then it's just, yeah. Um, but then you have the fan, you have uh, Fantasy of Flowers. Uh, yeah, okay, had, so that was a, pho a photography book. Okay, and then your sketchbook, and then uh, f uh, the Fantasy Workshop, the Practical Guide of Fantasy Art. Right. Um, yeah. You, we have a lot of a books, lot. You have yeah. a lot out, yeah, yeah. A lot of them are not available, I was surprised to see. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe they're just I know sold out. We need or... to get a new one now. Yeah, let's, let's make it happen. Did you ever strive <laughs> yeah. to uh, uh, snag Fabio as a model for for one of the uh, uh, the covers? We never worked with him. Um, there was another guy named John DeSalvo who was modeling at the same time that um, was also this really good looking uh, model from New York City that had really long hair and great body, and mm -hmm. he was modeling for a lot of romance novel covers at the time um so he was he was the guy that we had that was like nice. that well, if you're ever looking for like an in an imperfection painting or something like that we'll definitely yeah. like i said before <laughs> model for you yeah if you i've if you got you on my list guts, yes yeah, yeah. And fabio, fabio missed out because now he's just yeah. selling butter <laughs> <laughs> that, that lucrative julie bell deal yeah he could uh, <laughs> he could still do it if he wanted to hey fabio oh. yeah fabio <laughs> hit it up hit this up yeah <laughs> all right um go, going back to marvel um uh what what was it what was it like being like well first of all you were the first woman ever to to paint conan right that's what i understand yeah. yes um that's what i was told what was it like by just marvel. like just like you, you, I mean, you had you had your. Did you have Did you have kids? You had you had kids like when you were doing Marvel, right? So like, oh yeah. What, what What was it like, kind of like, being, um, almost, uh, I I don't know. I just I don't know the word I'm looking for. Um, just uh, like kind of being like. In that oh, yeah. world, of yeah, like the Marvel big, stuff, or, or 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 just like the like the kids, like the, like the culture of the yeah. company, sort of. Or? Yeah, and like being the well, hero hero of, for kids and stuff like that, you know, because like it's oh, kids weren't just looking; they were like they weren't just looking at the the card as just a card. They were looking as it, at it as artwork and seeing you know the signature of the artist on it and kind of like like what mike said being like you Painting were an inspiration the to them and um you know did did you kind of feel a way about that or did it make you feel you know i good really and... didn't think about it beyond honestly i have to say my own kids as far as like being an inspiration to kids because i didn't know that that i didn't you know it's like you don't know how your stuff is gonna go out into the world um i really did think it was super fun to have my kids come in and be like whoa wolverine or no oh, that's conan you know and so that was really, really fun to get their excitement about it. Yeah. Um, how did that and start? And I wanted to. Sorry, go ahead. How did it start? Yeah. How did like, how did the how did the whole Marvel thing start? Did you reach out to them? Did they reach out to you? Yeah, I did reach out to them. Um, I had been, um, I had known about Marvel, like I had read superhero comics in the late seventies, like the Avengers and stuff, and X Men and Thor. Those were in like Doctor Strange, 
Um, so I had like certain titles that I, uh, Spider-Man for sure, I really liked. Um, and then I, and I, I thought at one time that would be back during that time before I ever knew Boris or anything, I thought, oh, this is so cool. They had this book called the Drawing the Marvel Way or something like that. Drawing, I don't know if it was Drawing Comics the Marvel Way or just Drawing the Marvel Way. Mm-hmm. If you have, if you don't have that book, it's a great book for anybody who is interested in learning how to draw. It's really good. Um, but anyway, um, so, you know, during that time I would draw things from that book. I enjoyed that book a lot and I thought it was a really just neat to get involved with the Marvel things. And in fact, I just was really a big fan of Marvel at that time. And I remember I worked, uh, in Marquette, Michigan, I worked at a newspaper there and I worked in their advertising department, um, and I would do drawings for them sometimes. But anyway, I had access to the phone. And at the time, you had to pay for long distance calls. And I just, like, I don't know, it was kind of rascally of me, I guess, but it wasn't really a good thing to do, I guess. But I used to call, sometimes I would call up Marvel in New York City because it was just exciting to do this and call up and ask them questions about the characters, you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> I was be like, hey, why is the beast all of a sudden blue and furry when he didn't <laughs> used to be? How yeah. did that happen? Nobody, you know, they didn't ever explain that. And so lady, I'm the like, receptionist well, just, yeah. here. Like, what do you- <laughs> yeah, they were like, well, it was just a further mutation. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, I just always liked the idea of Marvel. And um, then, you know, when I had started doing my other artwork and doing things for video game covers and that, and so I had some, things that I could show as samples to get new clients. And so I was going to publishers in New York um, that were book publishers to try to get work doing covers and also video game covers. So I thought, hey, what the heck, why not go to Marvel and show them what I'm doing and see, you know, if they want me to work with, do something for them because they don't really have many painted artworks at this point. At that point, they really, I've only, I'd only seen one other time. I don't know how many times it had happened. But at the time that I first approached them, I had not seen very many um, painted things. Joe Jesco, I'm trying to think of how far ahead that was when he came out with his set. But anyway, they really liked what I had. And Boris knew um, John Romita Sr., who's not alive anymore, but um, he was friends with Boris. And so Boris called him up and asked if he would, you know, look at my work. And so I just drove to New York and took my stuff and had a meeting with him. And he was real excited about what I was doing. He liked the, the metal stuff that I had been doing. And I had done some covers for heavy metal at that time. So he could see that I could do the work. And he gave me this Conan covers to begin with. And then um, after that, I did I did those with the metal stuff in the Conan covers, even though it's not really typically part of Conan's world to have something so shiny like that. Mm-hmm. But I thought, what the heck, I'm just going to do it and see, you know, if it, go, if it flies. And they really loved that. And then right at that time, they were starting to do these trading cards. So they gave they assigned me um, Iron Man, Colossus, and uh, Silver Surfer, and Psylocke. All very Psylocke shiny. didn't have any metal in her, but the other three did. Yeah. And they assigned me those four cards. They wanted to see what would I do with that, you know, because it was this one set of some X-Men cards that were coming out. And so uh, I just thought, I'm going to really just blast the universe with these cards and do something really cool. And so um, that's just how it got started. Cool. Uh, I think Psylocke was the... Remember I told you um, the... F- I had two. I think I had two cards signed by you, and I and I lost one, or I don't know what happened to it. I think Psylocke oh. was the first card, and then I yeah. and then I came back to. I guess it was your son, or maybe it was his friend. I came back to. Hey, hey, I got another card. Can you get this signed? <laughs> but um, was it Psylocke jumping over the log? No, a sh- uh, she's kick, like got pink kick, fire, and she's yeah, kicking a leg up in the air. Yeah, well. There could have been a different one. Uh, the first one I did was this one where it's re- like a dark background and she's like, so it looks like she's out in the woods training at night or something yeah. like that, you know? Okay. Yeah. Maybe, maybe it's, yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah. Um, so really, really cool um, to hear uh, everything that you've done and um, just really, really cool to talk to you. Like I said, me and Mike, we're both, uh, both huge fans um do you want to talk about your website and the artwork that you have out there 
right now and what you have going on? Um, well, you know, I mean, I actually am on two websites. I'm on my own website at juliebell.com and I share a website with Boris at borisjulie.com. And, um, you know, I, uh, so people can see my work there. I guess the one that's juliebell.com has a little bit more, is more geared towards my animal things. And, um, the other one is more, a lot of my fantasy work that would be things like for our yearly calendar and fantasy art and that kind of thing um but uh one thing that i'm doing right now that's really um my own project is that i'm doing a children's book that i always wanted to do children's books long long ago oh, you know, really cool. way back yeah yeah and so i um i had done some paintings and they were these like they just turned into these animals that were kind of in this weird surrealistic kind of world and um a friend of mine the one who owns the Bougaro paintings, <laughs> actually, she said, you know, you should take these paintings and bring them together and see if there's a story because they feel like they're in the same world with each other. And so um, I was thinking about that for a long time. And then all of a sudden this publisher approached me and said they were, they wanted to have, they wanted to get new um, artists for children's books that would be these kind of books that were published like in the 60s and 70s that were the kind of weird, more surrealistic kind of children's books that they had back then and uh, published it in a more traditional way and everything. And so um, that was like amazing because I was just in the process of deciding about this book. And so when, when these people approached me, I was like, I think I can make a story with this. So I brought it together and I did have a story and it's, I just really, really love my story. And so I wrote this story and I've had editors, you know, help me with it and everything. Uh, and then I had to complete some more artwork for it and I'm still finishing that one up, but, uh, that should be within the next year. Probably I'll be coming out with this children's book. Hopefully. That Excellent. I'm going to be getting one. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. I'll be picking one up. Cause, uh, yeah, my, so we're trying to get him back into books uh, for bedtime and stuff like that. Now you know he's. Oh, uh, how old is he? He's he's three. Uh, he'll be, oh, actually, okay. he'll be he'll be four in about uh, next week. He'll be four. Yeah. Well, I think he'll like my story. Yeah, um, yeah, I can't wait for that. And, my, yeah. and the whole purpose of me writing it is actually I want I want it to be read to a child. I think that to me it's about the person reading it to the child. Yeah. Because of the way it's said. And I, I just feel like that would be so great. You know, is what it was like. I wrote it as if I could write it for my own kids, you know? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, Michael. Yeah. Um, uh, that's all I got. Julie, thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you. So thank much. you guys. You are, Seriously. Yeah. Thank you so much for inviting me. It was really fun. And you are an um, inspiration and a sensation. Yes. And, uh, and I, and, uh, to uh, two D's and an F podcast, I uh, guarantee, I guarantee, uh, promise I will work uh, to recreate my, uh, junior year. Birdman destroying a city. You've made which, uh, Michael an artist once again. All, once I'm done with it, all, <laughs> I, I want to see it. it over to yeah. you, yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll you got to send me a picture. Yeah, some for sure. We'll do, for sure. Good. Um, thank you so much. Julie, thank you so much for coming on. Thanks uh, for having me here.